Hello, Dr. Pena here. So in this presentation, I am going to discuss the importance of having a hearing test when you have dizziness or vertigo. Um, we get that question a lot when patients are sent to us by either their primary care physician or by the ear, nose, and throat doctor for hearing tests when they're complaining of having dizziness or vertigo. So the question is, why do I need a hearing test if I'm dizzy? So let's go through and I can explain why it's important. Having a thorough hearing test or audiogram can be really important in the diagnostic process and in the differential diagnosis for what might be causing your vertigo or your dizziness. Sometimes it can help um, kind of figure out which way maybe you should be referred on or further testing, like maybe do you need an MRI or do you need to see um, a different type of specialist like a neurologist or an orthopedist? Do you need a VNG, which is the vestibular nystagmography test that we typically do on patients that have vertigo? Um, do you maybe just need to go see a physical therapist? So a lot of times having that audiogram first kind of gives us some guidance as to what maybe we should do next. So there are actually quite a few um, conditions or syndromes that uh, hearing loss is part of the symptoms as well as the vertigo or the dizziness that you might have. Um, a lot of patients have heard of Meniere's disease. Um, Basically what that is, is it's a disorder of the inner ear, um, and it can cause episodes of vertigo, ringing in the ear, or tinnitus, or tinnitus, however you want to pronounce it, um, feeling a fullness or pressure in the ear as well, and typically fluctuating hearing loss. So um, the hearing test itself is actually part of the diagnostic process in order to give a diagnosis of Meniere's disease. Um, you have to have kind of a combination of all of those issues in order to reach that diagnosis. There are some other tests that we can run as well um, that kind of help confirm that diagnosis, but the hearing test and the balance testing um, and the symptoms are quite a large part and an important part of that uh, diagnosis. Typically, Meniere's disease happens in one ear. It can go to the second ear later on in life. Um, um, but it typically starts in just one ear. It's pretty rare to have it in both um, right away. And as you can see from the picture on the slide, Meniere's disease, what happens is fluid builds up in the inner ear part, the labyrinth, and it can cause distortions of the uh, semicircular canals and the other membranes in that inner ear. And that's what causes the episodes of vertigo and all the other symptoms, the fluctuating hearing loss, the tinnitus, and the fullness. So next I'm going to talk about vestibular schwannoma or an acoustic neuroma as it is often called. Um, this is a benign or non-malignant tumor of the eighth cranial nerve which is our auditory nerve. So um, a lot of times an asymmetrical hearing loss is um, one of the symptoms or signs of an acoustic neuroma as well as tinnitus in one of the ears or the affected ear. Vertigo can definitely be a symptom as well, and sometimes you have the vertigo without the hearing loss, and sometimes you have the hearing loss without the vertigo, and so um, having that audiogram can actually really uh, help with making a decision as to whether or not an MRI is also needed to confirm a diagnosis of a possible acoustic neuroma. Um, these neuromas are pretty rare. Um, prevalence is, I think, less than 1% of the general population, so there's not a whole lot of them. Um, and they occur in two different forms. One is sporadic, so um, just kind of random occurrence. And the other form is um, patients that have neurofibromatosis 2, type 2, uh, or NF2, um, a lot of, uh, not a lot of times, but there are cases where um, they develop those acoustic neuromas as well.
So again, hearing tests is really important because if there is signs in the hearing test that you may have one of these neuromas, then the uh, primary care or the ENT or the neurologist, whoever you're seeing, um, will probably want to have that MRI in order to confirm that diagnosis if that's what's suspected. So again, hearing test is definitely very important because it can kind of let them know which way to go. Okay, so next up is semicircular canal dehiscence. And what that is is when there is a thinning of the bone that surrounds that um, membrane of the inner ear and actually exposes those membranes. Um, typically, they're all encased in that hard bone of the skull, um, but occasionally there are some thin spots and that's known as a dehiscence. Uh, a hearing test is actually a really important part to diagnose this type of issue because there are certain results that don't um, add up and that are atypical of what we would expect from um, a hearing test. And so if we see those types of results, that may clue us in that there may be a dehiscence and further testing is needed. Oftentimes with this condition, vertigo is often triggered by changes in pressure, uh, whether that is altitude or elevation or blowing your nose maybe sets off some vertigo. Um, also, sometimes loud noises can trigger some vertigo. So there are some symptoms that come with a dehiscence that are um, unusual uh, or not common with other types of disorders of the vestibular system. Uh, if we suspect that you have a dehiscence, we will do another type of test called a VEMP, uh, which is pictured on the slide there where we put some electrodes on the neck and on the forehead, and we actually measure muscle contraction to loud sounds, and that helps us to confirm that there is a dehiscence there. Uh, the other testing that they typically will do is a CT scan to actually look at the bone and see if they can see the dehiscence. So again, an audiogram for this particular issue is very important because we may not catch those dehiscences if we're not doing a full thorough diagnostic audiogram uh, along with other testing. Okay, so otosclerosis is basically an abnormal growth of the bone in the middle ear, and it causes them to become more immobile or, or stiff um, in those that middle ear bone system. So the bones are not vibrating and moving freely the way that they should, um, and this can happen for a variety of reasons, but um, hearing tests, again, is important because a lot of times with otosclerosis there is some form of hearing loss, whether it's a conductive hearing loss or a mixed hearing loss, um, there's a, oftentimes at least some amount of hearing loss with this condition. Um, it can cause vertigo as well, so uh, not always. Uh, more often it's just the hearing loss. And depending on the degree of hearing loss, uh, you might be a candidate for a surgical intervention. Um, and if not, definitely hearing aids are a good option if your hearing loss is not correctable with a surgery. Um, but just keep in mind, if you are someone who already has a known um, diagnosis of otosclerosis, that you could possibly experience vertigo because of that condition. So a cholesteatoma is also a middle ear um, condition that can cause vertigo depending on the growth of this cholesteatoma. It is kind of a cyst-like growth that involves either the middle ear or the mastoid bone behind the ear. Um, sometimes it is a congenital condition, so there are some children that have these um, from birth, uh, but more often than not, it affects people that have had a very significant history of middle ear infections or middle ear disorders. So um, again, it forms a cyst or a sac in the middle ear, and it can cause erosion of the bones, and depending on the size, it can actually um, cause symptoms of vertigo along with the hearing loss that could be caused by the damage to that middle ear system from the growth. So transient ischemic attack, or a TIA, um, particularly the ones that affect the vertebrobasilar 
um, artery system that supplies blood to the inner ear uh, can cause uh, sudden hearing loss as well as sudden onset of vertigo. And so those typically come together. Um, it's usually one side is affected, not both. Um, and a lot of times when you go, if you go into an ER with a sudden onset of vertigo, sudden hearing loss, they will check uh, with an MRI to see if you've had a stroke. Um, and so typically they will rule that in or out pretty quickly. Um, but again, if you do have some hearing loss, they may send you to the audiologist first to have a hearing test to see um, if they do need to rule out the stroke or if it's um, could be something else related to that inner ear. So again, um, hearing tests would be a part of that diagnostic process as well. Okay, so the last slide here that I'm going to discuss are viral infections, particularly herpes family viruses like um, herpes simplex one and two, um, chicken pox, shingles, herpes zoster oticus, um, all of these are part of that herpes family. And if you've ever had any form of herpes, you know that those stay in your body forever. And unfortunately, they oftentimes cause um, inner ear problems. So um, it causes uh, either a vestibular neuritis, uh, which is an inflammation of the vestibular part of that inner ear, or it could even cause labyrinthitis, which is inflammation of the whole labyrinth. And in that case, hearing loss would be a symptom of that viral infection. So um, you can have just the vertigo alone where you have a vestibular neuritis, or you can have a labyrinthitis where you would have other auditory system symptoms, excuse me, like hearing loss or tinnitus or tinnitus. Um, and oftentimes you would also have some ear pain associated with that. If you do have herpes zoster oticus, you also would likely have a, a rash, a shingles-like rash, either in the outer ear or in the ear canal that would also be very painful. Um, if you have facial numbness along with that outbreak, then you probably have something called Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. These infections are typically unilateral, so it only affects one ear, um, and they typically are a sudden onset type of thing. So, and a lot of the patients that have sudden onset vertigo that resolves on over time, typically over weeks or a couple of months, probably had um, a form of vestibular neuritis caused by some kind of viral infection. And so when I do case histories with these patients, I often ask about herpes viruses because um, like I said, they're well known to stay in the body and they can trigger an, an, a viral inflammation anytime. And oftentimes stress, you know, can also trigger some of those um, infections or inflammations too. So um, herpes family viruses are notorious for causing inner ear problems, particularly vertigo. So if you ever have a history of that and you have a sudden onset of vertigo, very severe that lasts for a few weeks, it may be because of of a viral inflammation or an infection. Okay, well that concludes this presentation. I hope that um, now you have a better understanding as to why most of the time you start with the audiologist with an audiogram when you have vertigo. Uh, it really does help um, either the physician or the other specialist to know maybe what course of action to take, whether it's referring you for further testing or um, treatment or even to another specialist that might be um, more, it might be more appropriate for them to um, treat or manage your condition. So uh, the audiogram of, oftentimes is the first step and one of the easier things that can be done. Um, you know, it's a lot less expensive than an MRI and it can definitely help rule in or out some of those more serious conditions kind of right off the bat. Um, and then, like I said, there's a lot of conditions that have ear or related symptoms like hearing loss, maybe whether you're aware of the hearing loss or not, um, tinnitus, oral fullness or pressure, um, and also uh, ear pain, things like that. So 
Having an audiogram is actually a really important part of the whole diagnostic process and the differential diagnosis for what might be causing your vertigo. Your inner ear is, plays a large part in your equilibrium, so it makes sense that you would test part of that system um, and kind of see if it'll give you any clues as to what you might want to do next. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Again, this is one of my favorite subjects, so um, feel free to reach out to uh, the clinic if you have any questions. Um, if you heard any children in the background, I apologize, but I am doing this from my home, my kind of makeshift office space uh, while we're all kind of staying at home due to the COVID-19. So um, anyways, I hope you have a wonderful day and stay safe.